It is time for another reviewing your underwater films episode and today we'll be looking and reviewing a film from Jérôme Renaud Gou. Thank you Sebastian, <laughs> coming up. Hey and welcome back to the Underwater Filmmaking School and our Reviewing Your Underwater Films format. Please welcome Sebastian again here in the studio today. He uh, Hi guys. finally had some time to join me again for one of these review videos. And please excuse me, uh, Jerome, for not remembering your last name. Luckily, <laughs> Sebastian did remember and we hope we pronounced it correctly. Today we're going to be looking at a video that Jerome submitted a while ago actually already. It is a video that he has submitted to an underwater video contest and got placed second in that contest. Um, I have seen the video before because I was actually a jury member of the video jury for that contest. Sebastian has not really seen the video before himself, nope. so it's going to be a bit of a surprise. And without any further ado, let's jump right into that video and watch Sharom's video called Skelly the Skeleton Shrimp. Enjoy! Mm -hmm. Hello friends, this is my village. It's called Ahmed, north of Bali. But me, I live underwater. You can find me on a black sand slope. I hear it looks like the moon. Can you see me? I'm on this hydroid. Okay, that's me, Skelly, the skeleton shrimp. I'm actually not a shrimp, but an amphipod. We like to get on each other's back, but just for fun. I'm omnivorous and feed on everything that passes by. I'm about one centimeter tall and I have two big claws. I can be transparent, orange, yellow and even pink. To mate, I need to be very flexible and I can only do it when my female just lost her exoskeleton. That's me doing it. <laughs> When it's done, I'd rather go away quickly, because she may kill me. After mating, my female will brood the eggs in a brood pouch. You can see here all the eggs in her belly. She's getting contractions. It's about to happen. The babies will hatch and emerge as juvenile adults. And they will stay on their mom for a while. They will be everywhere, on her body, arms, antennas. like a coat around her. That's a close family. Then they will spread all over, fighting and eating on their own. But mom will never be too far. <laughs> That's my story. I hope you liked it. 
All right, thank you so much, Jerome, for submitting this really, really cool and funny video. Well done, absolutely well done. And uh, before I uh, continue with my feedback, I'll pass it on to Sebastian so I get a few more minutes to think about my <laughs> feedback and he can start with his portion. Feel taking free to the, go. Taking the easy way. Huh? <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, Jerome, um, I think there's a reason why you made the second place uh, on, the, on the contest. Uh, I like the video very much. It's it's very nice. It's a very nice story. Um, you did very well with the with the footage. Very very good uh, footage. Very nice macro footage. And uh, yeah, the overall the overall uh, video is is very well made. Um, yeah, there there are some minor points we could discuss, but uh, well, yeah, as I said, overall it's very uh, very great video and and a reason. Why mm. made a second place? Uh, mm. So it was, yeah, it was funny. I liked it. Um, at the beginning, I found the voice a little bit weird of the shrimp, um, but um, it, well, it, it it carries the story a little bit. So I think it it's, does. Uh, it's a very nice way. It yeah. does absolutely. Yeah, and I think that um, that it is a very creative way of transferring some knowledge. Like, because in the end, what you were doing, it was a tiny little documentary about the skeleton shrimps. Uh, what they are, where they live, um, how they live. Um, so I think it was it was transported in a very creative way and in a very. I think I could I could easily have my kids watch that and they would know what a skeleton shrimp is after that. So that's really really cool. Um, when we talk about the footage, um, big compliments because we know how difficult it is to capture really good macro shots, especially when we talk about subjects that are, as you said, about this big uh, at the most, like a centimeter. Um, so it does take uh, quite a bit of uh, skilled videography experience to be able to capture these shots. Um, so you did very well on those. Um, and the story, as Sebastian said, that's for me the biggest part of the video. You created a story that carries you through the entire video and doesn't make the video seem boring at any point. Even though the footage that you show is, and please don't take this negative, but it's oftentimes very similar footage, just from different angles and different individuals, but it's very similar. Um, but with the story, it doesn't seem like um, repeating itself because there's always new facts that you bring up with the story. And that just really makes it very cool. Yeah, but on the other side, um, the variety of, of different behavior um, you showed is, is very cool. Because like normally you would see somebody take it some macro shots, this would be a creature crawling uh, on, a, on, a, on a plant or on, on, a, on a coral. But you made like the, uh, with a belly, you saw with a, with a little with a little ones and, and yeah, different behaviors. So this is, was for me, it was very interesting yeah. and showed um, you thought a lot or had a lot of uh, spend a lot of time like um, doing uh, these these, uh, these shots. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, when we talk about the shots, there's maybe one thing that I noticed watching the video is that um, that the focus wasn't always, I think, where you wanted it to be. And this, um, I think, has to do because you were using um, autofocus. I don't think you were using manual focus for most of the shots, which is Fair enough, it can work as we've seen, but sometimes it seems like the focus was hunting a little bit because again, these creatures are so tiny and trying to, like if one part of the creature is in focus, another part is going to be out of focus and for the camera to decide that, that's probably very difficult. Um, but I fully understand that you might not be able to, um, or it was just impossible to uh, float, uh, capture, uh, frame your subject and pull focus at the same time as a one-man show that can be very or is very demanding and can be sometimes even impossible. Um, but that's really the only thing that I've noticed when it comes to the quality of the shots that sometimes the focus wasn't in the right place. Other than that, I think they were well framed, uh, well executed, well lit yep. um, also. Um, and you captured, as Sebastian said, a huge variety of different types of behaviors which made the shots um, just fit into each other very nicely and carried the story along that way. Yeah, well done from my side. Yeah. Really, really well-deserved second place there on the competition. One minor thing um, I saw were there were some on few um, on few clips there were some minor, um, how you say, uh, like uh, um, dots and uh, I think it was some dirt on the lens 
And um, well, that what we learned uh, over the, over the years is like really before every every dive when possible, clean your lens. Even you think it's not possible there's any any kind of dust or dirt on it, like clean it every time um, as well the camera and stuff um, to avoid stuff like that. Because especially if you're filming macro with a very um, shallow uh, depth of field, you can see all this this uh, um, dirt parts or, or dust parts very well on the on the footage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so agree. It's, uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I mean, if you w if you watch the video one time, um, I think you would you wouldn't or not you would normally you would not Most notice. But now we were really really picky and just watching uh, every every uh, detail, <laughs> and so we saw as it we do. Um, but yeah, it's just yeah. There's always way of improvement. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, but overall, as Sebastian said already as well, very, very good effort. Very well done, Jerome. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for making this video and putting it out there. I think this is just what we need. We need funny, entertaining, good stories like this connect to the underwater world to uh, just give more people an insight into what is actually uh, hidden underneath the surface. So thank you very much for that. Um, and hopefully we were able to give you some feedback that is beneficial to you that will help you um, in future underwater video productions to make them even better than what they are already at this stage. But as I said, uh, you've done a great job and this is a really, really cool video that you can really, really be proud of. Yes. For everyone else, guys, if you want to have your video featured in this series here, feel free to send me a link to your video to contact at MatthiasLibo.com. It's going to be listed down in the video description as well. Obviously, we're going to be putting the link to this video from Jerome as well as to his YouTube channel down in the video description too. So feel free to go and watch it there. Pay Jerome a visit, leave him a like and a comment. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much all I have to say for today. Any additions? No. No? Okay. I well, that's very German. <laughs> no. Okay. Let's see if next time maybe you have something else to say. Thank you so much for your time, guys, and for watching. And we will see you in the next Reviewing Your Underwater Videos episode. Bye, guys. Bye.